North Florida's housing market up here in the Jacksonville metro area. What the heck happened this last week? Well, I'll tell you what happened. These were the worst sales numbers, I believe, since I started doing this show. Oh my gosh, I says, did the sales crash this week? Is this the beginning of what's to come? Or was this a blip in the radar? We're going to check it out, look at all these numbers, and figure it out. Because I'm looking at those active listings. I'll look at the sales, look at the pending, look at the new construction, interest rates, everything. A whole lot more in this show. This is week 22 of my show, The Real Bubble Watch. And we're going to get to the active listings back in the Northeast Florida MLS right now. All right, here we are in the back end of the Northeast Florida MLS, and we're going to start off with those active listings. 6,912 homes available for sale right now. That's the inventory. Okay, next we're going to look at what sold in the last seven days. That number, 360. Next up, how many are contingent taking backup? These are homes that went under contract with contingencies. And those contingencies could be usually like financing, um, appraisals, and um, inspections. That number is 655. Next we'll look at how many went into pending status in the past seven days. These are homes that were under contract in the contingent status, but they ended up going pending. And that's the next step to closing. But not all pendings close. So how many went pending? 509. Okay, so that and the contingencies are your total that are under contract. Next we're going to take a look at how many withdrew their listings. These are people that took their house temporarily off the market. They're still active listings. That's 89. It's just that they can't be shown right now. Next we're going to look at expired. These are the ones that actually didn't sell and they are off the market. Went off. And for expireds in this past seven days, 167 listings expired. All right, now let's take a look at those new home sales. Okay, new homes in the last seven days. That number is 61. Next, we're going to take a look and see how many new homes are out of the active listings. How many are new homes that are for sale? This is the new home inventory, and that number right now is 1,917. Okay, next I take a look at what was in the um, foreclosure status and um, pre-foreclosure and short sales out of the active listings. So those that are in foreclosure status, that number is 22. And the amount that went in our pre-foreclosure are 13. And the ones that are in short sale status is 12. Okay, all those numbers that we just went through there, plus some more where I get all my data from, um, are, I export it as an Excel spreadsheet, and this is all the data that actually comes off of it, and then I transform it into my own Excel spreadsheet, which looks more like this, and makes it easier to read, and we're going to look at that. But before, before, before we do that, let's take a look and see what those crazy interest rates did this last week. Okay, here we look at the 30-year fixed, and what we see is last week we ended at 7.7, .7, and we see we had some green arrows and some red arrows, okay? It definitely had a, had, a, had a pretty good jump up there, but then we had some good jumps down, so we ended up at 7.69, so basically unchanged from last week. All right, those VA loans are generally a little bit less, so what did they do? Okay, the VA loans, same thing here. We had the green arrows up and, and I mean, green arrows down and some red arrows up. So we were at 7.15 last week and ended up at 7.16. So it's also stayed about unchanged. Now let's take a look at those FHA rates. Those FHA rates, 7.13 last week, 7.15, pretty close. Same amount of arrows, two up, four down. Okay, next I take you to four charts, and this is where I look at. Now, this is Jacksonville data on these charts here. So sometimes they're a little bit off of some of the other stuff we'll see in my, my charts when I do, do all of Northeast Florida. Okay, so these are Jacksonville numbers. We keep using this just so we have something to compare with. Okay, and it's going to be close to what this area is. 
All right, the first one we look at is the price per square foot. Let's check it out. Okay, as we look, now of course this is the three year back, so it's a little harder to see. Go to one year, and you see where it flattened out there. Okay, we flattened out. Go to six months back, and also it really sees it. So what did we got? Six weeks of flat. I don't think it's done that um, before. Yeah, when we look back here, one year back, um, we saw where we had five right down here in March, um, but we haven't had six weeks. So, all right, what's going on? Is again, is this the calm before the storm? If things finally slow down, or are buyers going to get start getting a break on the price of the house? Well, let's check out what that inventory did. Here we are in the inventory chart, and you can see. By the looks of that, it's dipped a little bit. But we're going to see. Now, remember, these are Jacksonville numbers, and we'll see how that number plays out when we look at all Northeast Florida. But it looks like the inventory went down a little bit, and that's not good because generally when that inventory pushes down, the other side, the price per square foot and the price of the houses go up. So speaking of price of houses, look, look at that median price. At that median price, that has seemed to have flattened out. And that goes along with our price per square foot. So that there has stayed about the same. I mean, it looks a little a little wiggly, um, but that's just because um, that the amount three forty eight thousand and some change. You know, there may have been a little bit up or down, close to three forty seven or three forty nine. Okay, next let's look at those days on the market. All right, we go back here six months out, and look at that, how it still has flatlined too. So what's that telling us? I know when we, when we see those um, multiple offers and stuff, then that's when we start to see things drop as far as days on the market. So you see where we took that drop, and but it's flatlined out. So that should tell me that, we'll look at the charts, but that should tell me that the... Um, um, selling for list price and selling for above list price would probably be close to what the last couple of weeks have been. All right, now you know, um, you know, I haven't said this in a while. We're talking about 2008, 2010, and now a lot of people said it's the same, it's worse. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of differences. It's not the same, really. Um, you know. You know, we don't have the foreclosures that we did. At least we haven't been seeing that. Um, but don't just listen to what I have to say. Let's see what someone else has to say. Okay, let's look at this week's headline. Goldman is back with a 16 years later look at the housing market crash of 2008 and finds affordability is even worse right now. Okay, so a lot of things aren't like they were, but affordability is worse. Okay, let's look more into this article here. They say that history trends to repeat itself. That's happening in the housing market right now, except it's actually worse than the disastrous crash of 2008 in some ways, according to Goldman Sachs analysis. Okay, mortgage rates are at their highest levels in more than two decades. Okay, we all know that. The average sale price in the U.S. hit nearly a half a million. Now, they say 500000 but 500,000 is a half a million, according to the Census Bureau, okay? And that's nearly double the price of the homes at the time that the housing bubble burst in 2008. And then down here, this part says, while housing and more generally consumer fundamentals are in a much stronger position, now this is what I've been talking about, affordability for incremental buyers is worse than in the peak in 2006 before the crash. So it's like we've been seeing the affordability with this price going up and the I mean what's really caused this affordability problem it's like you would expect that when those interest rates went up that the uh, prices would go down because you know sales would be down but we've been seeing the sales go up except this week where we've got a disaster and um, so, so is that going to change the prices finally? Are we going to see that dip in that price per square foot? So we'll find out. Let's go to the charts now and see what's going on. 
All right, here we are in the main chart, and we look at here, we're at Season 2, Week 22, right here, and next to it is Week 22 of last season, so a year ago, and then why, why so you can compare year over year the difference between a year ago. These others in yellow were the previous weeks that we had, and of course this chart, you know, I've been tracking this all the way back there from May 19th, my first bubble watch, okay? And all this data here is, uh, I keep it, and we just compare it week by week. All right, um, let's look at the active listing, 6,912, so inventory's up. Now remember that other chart said inventory was down, but again, that was Jacksonville itself. This here is the nine counties all around uh, the Jacksonville metro area. All right, sold, 360, this is the disaster right here. Look at that, week 20, 535, week 21, 552, then bam, 360 this week. All right, let's scroll back and see when it was this bad. Fives, fours, fives, fives, jeez. Fours, seven, six, oh my gosh. Holy crap, this is even worse than I thought. Now, like I said, this may be the worst since um, I've been doing the show. Back there, 300, back there in February, okay, of this year, okay? So we were there uh, week 39 of season one. All right, so it's been quite a while since we've seen numbers this low, okay? Um, what does this represent? This represents about a 35% decrease in sales from last week that we've seen. All right, let's look. Contingent taking back up 655, pretty close. Pending, not too far off there, but it's enough that it dropped down the total under contract. And look at the total under contract's been falling. Let's scroll back just a little bit and see. Okay, we'll got we'll got that there. And as we look, 1296, 1239, drop 1223, 1217, now 1164. So it's continuing to drop. All right, let's look at there. The withdrawals, 89, about the same. Expired, less people expired um, than we had. Um, probably less, well, you got you got the inventory. So people going on the market. You know, maybe they're just going below list. We're going to see how that chart goes. Um, new homes sold, 61. And new homes active, 1917. So we definitely see that, that um, crash there in new home sales. And that rep, that 61 there represents about 42% decrease from last week. Okay, and uh, if you look over here on the side, year over year, 50% less than last year. And why don't I have yellow? There we go. Okay, now what I started a few weeks ago, we see there in the orange, that is the percentage of homes sold that are new construction. And we've been seeing it gradually going up here. More, more of the homes sold are new construction. How did we do this week? Well, it's following everything else and it dropped. Well, let's get that orange. 17%. That's quite a drop too. So the you know the percentage of new homes um, really went down. And so, man, I go. That's why I do this show. We track all this stuff every week, and then we can't wait till next week to see what these numbers are. All right. Um, how are people paying for these homes? All right. Right here, cash. 32% cash. That's up. Um, wow. Okay, conventional mortgage, 41% about the same, FHA 16. VA took a drop half. It dropped in half what it was last week, down to 8%. We haven't seen that for a long time. I'm looking a little across this list, and I don't see it there at all there. 3% is other. Now, I want to tell you something interesting about the VA. You know, I mean, I just looked at these numbers here tonight, and to see how much the VA dropped, but there must have been something going on in other places other than just here in the Jacksonville metro um, because I started hearing ads on the radio. Maybe the ads were targeted for here, but ads advertising VA mortgages, 
and telling the benefits and trying to get rid of a lot of misconceptions about VA mortgages, how they were explaining that. You know, it depends on the lender what some of those requirements would be on their parameters for getting financed. All right, so the fact that I started hearing ads and then I saw this, well, it's not a coincidence, okay? All right, let's look at some more numbers. All right, the percentage of homes that sold for 500,000 and above, 29%, that number went up, okay? So that's the highest we've seen here in a while. Wow, okay? I'm surprised, kind of surprised to see that. Homes that sold under list, 67% about the same. Homes that sold at list, 17, close to it. Homes that sold above list, a little less. Well, we dropped a few points ab above list, but they went at list, went up. And remember I was saying that now you'll get multiple offers because everyone's bidding way below list. So a lot of times that multiple offer will actually be at list price. And, uh, and that's what does it, and that corresponds with our days on the market chart that I was telling you about earlier. Okay, let's look at that foreclosure charts, like I was saying. 22% are in foreclosure status, 13 in pre-foreclosure, short sales are 12. Total of 47, again, the tsunami has not hit. All right, let's look at those new construction numbers. 48% sold under list, the same as last week, and I was thinking like, uh-oh, are we going to have the same numbers like we did last week? The week before were exact, but no, they didn't. All right, homes sold at list, 20%. That increased, and homes that sold at list decreased to 32. So here we go again, you know, with those uh, list price taking a little increase. Okay, the next chart is where I go by the nine counties up here in this Jacksonville metro area. And because people had requested it, that's why I show the sales for the counties and we can compare them with the previous weeks to see what the counties are doing. Okay, before we do that, I go into what is called MLS Advantage and we, um, we take a look at all these other MLS boards that are around us, that not just Northeast Florida like that I'm a member of that I do, but some of these cross sell and stuff, so it gives us a better picture of what's going on. Let's go into MLS Advantage and see what it did. Okay, we're here in MLS Advantage, and we're looking at those counties, Baker, Bradford, Clay, Duval, Flagler, Nassau, St. John's, Union, and Putnam. So what we're gonna do next is hit that search button and see what that brings us, what numbers we got, total sales. Okay, 474 sales, okay? Okay, I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna put them in a chart so that we look at those counties. Hey, you know, before we look at that chart there, I just wanna say, if you like what you're seeing so far in this video, and uh, what I do weekly, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna be part of Bubble Watch Nation and get notified when these videos come out, then just subscribe and then hit the notifications. And you know what? I'm just a regular guy who happens to be a real estate agent up here in Northeast Florida. And you know what? I just show you the back end of my MLS account and just show you the real numbers. And then also, if you'd like myself or any member of my team up here in Northeast Florida to help you if you're planning on moving to Jacksonville or moving out, then give us a call. We'll be glad to help you out. Okay, let's look at those counties and see what they did. All right, here we are. Uh, Baker, one, went down a couple. Union, a goose egg like last week. Bradford, close to the same, down one there. Clay County, yeah, they dropped to 40. Nassau had 37. Duval took a big hit at 162. St. John's also a big hit. St. John's very popular area. Um, they've got that uh, area Nocatee in there um, and uh, a lot of other places too over there by the coast. They're 143. Flagler, which is most, mostly um, Palm Coast area, you got 69. They took a big hit. Putnam County dropped 19. There's our total 474. Last week it was 819. Holy crap. I mean that, I mean this this is stunning this is amazing and you know this these charts here I got and like like I said we we'll go back to the main here and you see I've got all the way back with all that data and so that if that's if that's something you'd like if you'd like this chart and also more data I got 
And I got a weekly newsletter that comes out every Tuesday, and in it you can download this chart. Uh, plus, you can also download the MLS sheets to the Houses of the Week, and it has a lot more information about homes they're selling and other events that are going on in this area for that week. All right, and all you got to do is just send a request to this email, or you can text me. All right, now let's go to question of the week. All right, this week's question is actually going to be kind of quick because it's actually an answer, more of an answer to a previous question we had the other week. Um, someone brought this to my attention. It was actually a pretty good idea that I hadn't been doing and hadn't thought about. Um, it was another realtor out west that um, I'm friends with and part of my referral network like for folks like sometimes we get people that want to you know want to you know buy or sell in another state that I'm not in and I have a network where I refer them to these other agents to help them out um, now the question was about you know about getting a home inspection on a new house on new construction and I had said you know I said three okay the foundation um, when the studs are up before the drywall and then after the drywall's up. But this guy, <laughs> he does a fourth and it's actually a good idea. What he does is the home warranties is usually a year for all your basic crap, okay? But um, the structures usually go 10 years. But what he does is in that 11th month, okay, before that one year home warranty is up, he gets a home inspection, another inspection, just to see if everything's okay because if you catch it before the warranty and turn it in, they got they got to fix it. Okay, even though they don't may not fix it for a couple months after the warranty's out, um, you know some are better than others. But the fact is, you, if you spot it before and you turn it in before, it's a legit claim. Um, then you're covered. So I think that's a good idea to get that inspection a month before the warranty's up. Um, that's pretty good. I'm going to start recommending it to my customers. All right, now let's go to Houses of the Week. We're going to start off with the house that sold below list. Let's take a look at it. Okay, this house here sold what well, was listed for $675,000. On the market, 110 days. During that 110 days, they dropped the price 100,000 to 575, okay? Well, what did they sell it for? Well, they got an offer and ended up selling it for 560,000, okay? 115,000 below list price. Not only that, on top of that, this house needed some repairs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, 560,000, you still got to fix stuff. All right, and they gave them a concession of $3,000 towards repair. All right, let's see, what did these people pay for this house? Okay, they bought the house, okay, July of 2020 for $415,000, okay? So let's put it into an appreciation calculator. Okay, here we're at the site, goodcalculators.com, and uh, let's see what the numbers come out to. All right, bought it 415 in July of 2020. Sold it at uh, now I they sold at 560, but I take the 3,000 out for what they gave concessions. Okay, and so we're at 557. That comes out to 9.61 percent over a little over three years, and we've seen quite a few of these homes that were bought in around 2020, and even some in 2021. They've sold them out, even though we've had uh, we had that dip last year in prices. But because of the prices going up this year, um, a lot of these people have recovered and getting nine point six percent. And just a couple of years time, there or three years time, this is actually pretty good in the environment we're in right now. All right, let's take a look at that house that sold for above list. Okay, this house here listed at $295,000 was on the market for only three days. Now, they don't have any remarks saying that, you know, highest and best by this or that, but I bet you there was, there was multiple offers and these people just decided to take it and run with it. Of course, they didn't lower the price any, kept it at $295, got an offer, $308 sold it for three hundred and eight thousand FHA financing no concessions that was thirteen thousand dollars above list now keep in mind also that it had to appraise and um, it with the FHA 
they, you know, just like the VA, when they do an appraisal, if there's things that are wrong with the house, then they got to be fixed before the loan will be approved. A lot of times it can be windows, screens on mobile homes, it's skirting, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, you know, some, sometimes electrical issues, you know, like outlets that maybe have the covers off or something. A lot of time, you know, wood rot, you know, so a lot of times the, the uh, sellers will go ahead and fix that. Um, so, um, but it's still appraised and for that. Let's see what they paid for it. Okay, this house here, they bought it in 1998 and paid $88,000. Okay, 88,500, okay? All right, let's put that in an appreciation calculator. Okay, 885 sold at 308, ended up at almost 5% a year for 25 and a half years. All right, so they that's about what things are. 5 to 6% is what's normal that you can expect. And of course, owning it for that long they put money into it and repairs but that's all part of owning a house okay it's part of it but you always used to get that five or six percent now keep in mind you know when they bought this in the 90s they went through the disaster of 08 to 2010 and then they went through the disaster we had here in 2022 um, but then some recovery so they were able to get through all that over the time and and still get you know get the get their return you know they didn't take a loss now they did okay maybe they priced it a little bit lower than what they should have maybe they could have got more if they kept it on the market a little more but you know whoever told them you know that that was the market price and then when someone came and gave above they got excited and, and jumped on it okay we don't know what it appraised for okay so so that's it so if by looking at these numbers now especially this mess that happened this week with these sales going down so much if you're buying or selling now you're really sitting there going holy crap you know what do i do you know well if you've got to buy or sell then you just don't have no choice if you don't have to then you got some choices to think about and make. Do you wait and see if they go down further and take a chance? Um, you know, but the interest rates are up like that, and you might get the better deal on the house. You know, at these rates, or are you going to wait for those rates to come down, but then the price goes up? It's something you got to figure out. But that's why you come back to this show every week, and we watch that trend. So, was this a blip on the radar, or was this what's yet to come? We're going to find out because. Week 22 is right now in the can, and until week 23, I'm out of here.